you can get one answer. Sometimes you can get multiple answers, and sometimes you get no solution. And it, so we have to identify what that is. So 5x plus 12 is a norm. We got 15x um, plus 60, which is equal to negative 15. We subtract 60, we get 15x is equal to negative 75, divide both sides by 15, and we get x is equal to negative 5. This is the only type of solution that we are used to, okay? So this means that if I went back and I substituted negative 5 over here, I could find out that negative 5 times 15 plus 60 would give me a negative 15. Okay, that's how I would check it. All right, both sides are equal, it checks. So let's go on to example number one. Example number one, six times three is six X, six times negative three is minus 18, six, okay, then plus 10 is equal to two times three is six X, two times negative four is negative eight. So now I'm going to combine my like terms on this side. I've got 6x minus 8 is equal to 6x minus 8. Huh. That's interesting, isn't it? Because if I add 8 to this side and add 8 to this side, I end up with 6x is equal to 6x, don't I? If I subtract 6x from this side, subtract 6x from that side, I actually end up with 0 is equal to 0, don't I? Okay? When you get this situation, what that's telling you is that there are an infinite, infinitely many solutions okay and what what that is when you have an infinitely many solution it means I could probably plug so many different numbers in for X and get a solution that was correct and if you notice the reason that happens is look at your first equation look at what happens as soon as you do this I end up with this and do you see that they're equal so it doesn't matter what I substitute for x, I'm going to have equality on both sides of the equation, aren't I? And so that means that there is an infinite amount, number of solutions. So um, this one is true because that solution set is true, okay? So let's try it. Here I get 18 minus 12x is equal to negative 12x. Um, uh, plus 18. Now, if I don't recognize that all right off the bat, if I add 12x here, add 12x here, I those wipe out, I end up with 18 is equal to 18. Isn't that a true statement? Correct? 18 does equal 18? Where? All right. It just, it's kind of a, that's not a negative sign. All right. So 18 is equal to 18. It's true. Therefore, I know I have an infinitely many solutions. And when you have an infinite number of solutions, it's also known as the set of all real numbers. Okay. And a lot of times you will have a big R, and sometimes it has two in it. I'll usually put two lines down my R. And what that means is the symbol for the set of all real numbers. Okay? 
And that means that it could be an irrational, it could be irrational, the set of all real numbers, all right? Any number that you know of today, if you substituted that number in for x, it would work, all right? So when you end up with a true situation and your variables cancel out, that means you have the set of all real numbers. Everybody good with that? Okay. So try and cancel the if you these can't if you see that they're the same, cancel them out. If what's left is the same, you have a true statement. You have the set of infinite, um, infinite, infinitely many solutions, which is the set of real numbers. All right. Example two. A times four is thirty-two. All right, and 8 times negative 2x is negative 16x is equal to 12 minus 20x plus 4x. First thing I'm going to do is clean up my, my side. I've got 32 minus 16x is equal to 12. Negative 20, positive 4 gives me negative 16x. Hmm, well, if I add 16x to both sides... I'm going to end up with 32 is equal to 12. Is that a true statement? That is a false statement. Okay, it is false. Therefore, for this equation, there is no solution, which is also known by that symbol, which you can see the words empty set sometimes used. So other times you'll see null set. All those things mean the same thing. No solution, empty set, null set. They all mean the same thing. There is no solution out there that you know of that would work. Okay? Now in Algebra 2, you'll find out that there are imaginary numbers. And that will be a different situation. Come in, please. Okay. So, A, let's try this one. 6x plus 10 is equal to 10x minus 20 minus 4x. 6x plus 10 is equal to 10x minus 4x is 6x minus 20. If you can see what's going to happen already, my variables are going to cancel, and I'm going to with 10 is equal to negative 20. That therefore it is not a that is not a true statement. It is false. Okay, and well, that means it's the no solution set, and it can be done like this. It also can be shown as you know how in set notation that is the empty set in set notation if they give it to you in set notation. And they can say no solution, they can say empty set, they can give you this symbol in set notation. All of those are going to mean the same thing. So down here in words, it's no solution. Okay, A does not, make sure you put a line through your equal sign, B, okay, and that is like example two. One solution is up there in the warm-up. And it is x equals some number, all right? Because your variables don't um, cancel out, all right? And then identity is when there's infinitely many solutions or the set of real numbers is what you'll see, okay? Where a does equal a, and that's like example one. So now you've realized that there's three different solutions that you can get to an algebraic equation. You only thought there was one. Okay? Everybody good? Flip the page. <clears throat> Alright, directions. Solve the following. I'm going to do one here. Alright. 
Let's see, the best way to do this would be. All right. I've got 3x over 2 plus x over 5 is equal to 17. I'm going to do this. I need to get them with common denominators before I can do anything, right? So 3x over 2, and I'm going to put x over 5. What is the smallest common multiple of 2 and 5? 10. Okay? So if it doesn't matter what the numerators end up with, it's the denominators. But if I multiply um, 5 by 2, right? What am I going to end up with? 10, correct? If I multiply 2 times 2, I'm going to end up with, uh, 2 times 5, I'm going to end up with 10. So now i got to do this times 5, which is 15, and i got to do this times 2, which is 2x, correct? Are we all good with how I got there? Yes or no? Okay, remember I said a long time ago, it doesn't matter where that variable is. Okay, 15x over 10 is the same as 15 over 10x, which is the same as 15 over 10x. They're all the same. They all mean the same thing, okay? So I'm just going to pull that variable off just because I think it's easier to manage in my head. So now I know that 3 halves is going to be 15 tenths, and I got an x, plus x over 5 is now going to be 2 over 10x is equal to 17. Everybody comfortable with where I'm at? Okay. All right. 15 plus 2 is how much? 17 over 10x is equal to 17. How do I get rid of that fraction? How do I make that a 1? Yeah, it's getting easy, isn't it? 10 over 17, so I'm going to multiply this side by 10 over 17. That cancels out. I get x is equal to, guess what? 17s cancel out. I get what? 10 over 1? 10 over 1, which is 10. Okay? Always simplify before you multiply. It'll save you a lot of hassle. Okay? I could go back in. Plug my answer <coughs> and do a check. All right, number two. 8z minus 22 is equal to 3. Oh, why am I rewriting? Okay, I don't want to rewrite that part. Ah, get that eraser. I lose a pencil every day. Can you imagine that? All right, 3 times 3 is 9. Z. 3 times 11 is plus 33 minus, and I'm going to write my 1z there, okay? So I'm going to clean up this side. I've got 8z minus 22 is equal to 9 minus 1 is 8z plus 33. Does somebody already see what's going to happen? If my variables are the same number and the same sign, okay, all right, when I subtract 8z, what happens? they go away. If they were opposite signs, this wouldn't work. So you got to make sure they're the same sign. Negative 22 does not equal 33. It is a false statement. Therefore, this is the no solution to this problem. Or I could put the empty set. I could write it anyway. Okay? Everybody good? Yes? No? Maybe so? All right. Lopez spent one-third of his vacation money for travel and two-fifths of his vacation money for lodging. He spent $1,100 for travel and lodging. What is the total amount of money he spent on his vacation? So, question. Uh, they want to know total dollars spent, right? Okay. So, we've got... This one-third of means we're multiplying it, right? What's our variable? The money, right? One-third of is money. I'm just going to make it an X. Two-thirds of, which is multiplying his money, okay, for lodging. So let X equal 
money. Okay, total money. So we're looking for, we've got one third of his money was spent for travel and means we're adding two fifths of his money was spent on lodging and he spent a total of $1,100, right? For travel and lodging. What is the total amount of money he spent on his vacation? All right, so the total of his vacation is what they want. Total money, so total dollars spent, I should have probably put vacation here so that I remember that's what I really want. Okay, so I've got to change this. Least common multiple of 3 and 15 is what? Or 3 and 5? Oh, I blew that one. 15. 15. One third, how many fifteenths does that equal? Five, right? So I got five fifteenths x plus two fifths. How many fifteenths does that equal? Six. Six, because five times three is fifteen. Two times three is six. So plus six fifteenths x is equal to eleven hundred. Eleven fifteenths x is equal to 1100. How do I get rid of that fraction? It just doesn't make you happy now not to be worried about that. Oh my gosh, for how long? Oh my goodness. 15 elevenths. 15 elevenths. I get that. I get 1x is equal to. Now, can I simplify this before I multiply? 11 goes into itself how many times? 1. How many times does 11 go into 1100? 100 times, right? 11 times 100 would give you 1100, is that correct? Are you sure? All right, so we could simplify it. Or we could do 1,100 times 15 and then divide it by 11. It's going to give you the same answer. 100 times 15, all you do is take your 15 and add your two zeros from 100 on it, and you've got your solution. If I needed to check it, I'd go back in, put 1,500 here, here, put 1,500 here, do the math in my calculator. When I do that, I should get the same, I should get 1,100. Okay? Now, Vacation for travel, money of his lodging. So, travel and lodging was 1100 So, how much did he spend on his vacation? So, one third on vacation money for travel and one two fifths of his vacation money on lodging. So he had, he spent 1100 for travel and lodging. What is the total amount of money he spent on his vacation? For travel and money. Lord have mercy. I don't think I've ever answered this right. I don't like that question. Cabinet A. Is 5 inches taller than cabinet B? Cabinet C is 3 inches taller than cabinet B, whose height is x inches. Write an algebraic expression for the heights of the cabinets A and C. So what did they tell us about cabinet A, cabinet B, cabinet C? What do we know for sure? Okay, what is B? So what is B? X. So cabinet B is X. How do I represent A? Ah, look at that word. Then, what are you going to do? X plus 5, right? Okay. Taller than, what are you going to do for C? Uh-huh. Now, 
Did they ask you for an equation? Did they ask you to solve an equation? All they asked you to do is what are the expressions? Okay, here are my expressions. Now, if the total of height of the three cabinets, if the total heights of the three cabinets are 3x plus 8 inches, can you solve for the height of cabinet B? So, they want to know what is cabinet B. Okay, that's the ultimate goal here. My total is 3x plus 8. All right, so here we go. If I have, how can, I know that cabinet A is x plus 5. That's representing cabinet A, isn't it? Okay. And I could do it this way so I could keep myself, or I could just write it in one big long list. Cabinet B is x, so that's B. Okay. Cabinet C is x plus 3. I don't have to use parentheses. I'm just putting them there so you can see that I have it because it's all addition. All right. So that's why I have a plus sign in between. And they're all equal to 3x plus 8. Okay. So I've got how many x's? 3x, right? Because 1, 2, 3. And I've got 5 plus 3, which is what? Plus 8 is equal to 3x plus 8. Uh-oh. So what can we say here? This is true, right? So how many solutions are there going to be? So infinitely many solutions, or I could just write x is equal to the set of all real numbers, all right? So can I solve for b was the question. We cannot solve for the height of cabinet B because the height of B can be any number above zero. Because is there any way you're going to have a height of zero on a cabinet? Okay. I can put any number in there. So you really can't tell me how tall these cabinets are. You could all give me different solutions that would work, correct? As long as it was the answer was above zero. So real in reality, we really can't solve for B. All right, here we go. Suppose your club is selling candles to raise money, and it costs. And we gotta hurry. Costs a uh, hundred dollars to rent a booth from which to sell the candles. If the candles cost your club $1 each and are sold for $5 each, how many candles must be sold to equal your expenses? Okay, so we've got booth rental is $100. Candles cost how much? $1. We sell candles, sell for $5. So let x equal number of candles. And the question was, how, we need to know the number of candles to equal expenses. So what were our expenses? Both of these are your expenses, correct? Okay, so we need an equation. Well, if each candle, the cost of each candle is a dollar, and you have a rental booth of a hundred, 
We need to know how many at five, how many candles at five dollars we need to sell to equal this amount, or and actually, because it says uh, to cover our expenses, that would be equals. It's not greater than. Okay. So subtract one x. I get one hundred is equal to four x. Divide by four. I get x is equal to twenty five. All right, I'm giving you two things today, okay? And I was going to give you the other one tomorrow, so don't worry about it, okay? Your test is a week from tomorrow, okay? Your test is next Friday, so I'm going to give you your review. Uh, this is my suggestion. You pick at it, okay? Do you know what pick at it means? Pick at it means you do one or two here, you do one or two here. As you come across things that we haven't even learned yet, don't worry about those because we have to learn a week of teaching, all right? It's just a way, I, and then you want to come to me if you can't figure out one that we should have known, and you can ask me questions about them, all right? I'm here to help you. Eventually, next week, I will post the answers. You can take a picture of the answers. This is not a grade. This is for your benefit. I will say this. Anybody who doesn't do the reviews does not do well on tests. And that lesson will either be learned the hard way or the easy way. Your choice. Now, um, for some reason, I keep thinking this is Friday, but it's Thursday. Um, that's why I was handing you the review, so I wasn't eager to do it. Um, I got something else in here I wanted to say. Um, a lot of you are not starting your homework until you get home. Why is that? What are you doing in writer time? Okay. Okay. Well, this is kind of my thought on that. All right. If you start your algebra home, which homework are you going to usually have questions about? If you do algebra. So if you start your algebra in writer. You might even be in a writer time with a friend that you might be able to say, and once they figure out you're in algebra and that's what you're doing, they're going to be okay with that, believe me. You know, you might want to sit near a friend in algebra if you have somebody in your writer time like that. Um, then you might know, and you could pop in here before you go to sports, if any of you are in sports or any of you in sports, okay? Because you don't have to be there. students do that with me because they don't want to be there, okay? Um, then you're not going to get behind. So I think some of you are coming here and you haven't finished, you have questions, but then you don't have time to get those answers here this morning, and then you end up turning it in late or don't get it. You know, it's just a thought because most of the work that others, the other teachers are giving you, you probably can do without a thought. So just a thought. Yes, ma'am. What writer time do you have? Yes. You need to check in with him. And then you can come on in. Okay. That broke up my brain. That's the calculator. And by the way, I did give you your ten extra credit for eighth grade, right? I put it on that one that you had to redo. Yeah. That's just one of those not dumb ones.
you're too smart for this. Yes, I know. That's what you're supposed to say. We do this every year. No. Yes. What's it gonna be like in high school? My gosh, you're too smart for this. It's not worth it. It's easier just to do, you know, get it done. Nobody's gonna come after you in high school. Nobody's gonna bother. They're not gonna worry. You're just gonna fail. That's not what you want, sir. That's what you're missing. 